First off, I'm going to make this video and I want you to look at this. It says Navigator Limited Edition. Absolutely, this vehicle is longer than the average Lincoln. I'm not going to get in the way where my son's working on it. But the back window is much longer than a standard Lincoln. And yes, if you put the same shocks on this vehicle that you would on a regular Lincoln, it's not going to ride the same. And I'm going to drop down and let you see. This is what's the problem. Air shocks. And they have to be changed out to coil. And Ford is lying to customers selling parts to exchange these out and you cannot change them out if you do get fortunate enough those are still in decent shape though they're used my front ones were beat to death holes in them everything but I'm doing a conversion now. By the way, doing a conversion now. And there's your the new shocks that are taking over from the old. I seen a man just make a video on a short regular Lincoln. So when my son gets finished with this video, I will continue to show you the breakdown and what he did that was a little bit different might save you a little more problem in the long run. So thank you and we'll be back. Okay, what you have to do is you have to go in there, jack up that base because the new shock needs to be compressed the reason it has to be compressed is because in order to really get a lot of room you have to get that bolt out the only way to get it back in is to jack it up which I don't mind helping he Hang on a second. There we go. There we go. Right before your eyes. It's better if you have another person to help you. If you don't, at least you get to see that. Get jacked up. You have to sandwich them back together. The difference is my shocks are Monroe. I'm not getting paid. I'm not giving them any kudos. I'm just telling you, I chose to buy Monroe Lifetime Warranty. Uh, I got a good deal on them. And the, the difference is straight up they're higher I measured it and it's absolutely higher than my air shocks by four inches a little bit almost four and three quarters that's brand new not road on the road at all they'll calm down but no that these here are the 1800 series uh, Monroe. 
they're the higher quality brand and I'll tell you uh, in an updated video uh, how it does ride because I am used to it. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the height. I have short hands, but from here to there, you're, you're still looking good for four and something. It looks like it's came down a little bit. It's to be, be expected when you have to put regular socks on. I'm going to try to get in here and get a little glimpse of what it looks like when it's all on your vehicle. It's all bolted up. Anyway, my car's been sitting without being driven since November because I tried to fix the air shocks and they're not telling the truth at Ford. They need to have a class act lawsuit out with them because it's called a dynamic modular valve um, suspension module. Dynamic suspension module that's underneath the foot pedal of your vehicle up on the firewall. It's another electric component. I absolutely had a person from a Ford company absolute to a absolute Ford dealership manager tell me here's the part number but guess what ladies and gentlemen they're no longer producing them at Ford there's not a aftermarket and uh Another key factor is what my son's doing right now is see the way we'll figure it out, but pull that out for a minute. This that there comes off your air shock. Depending on the year you have, you're gonna hear ding 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 and everything else. 06 is the last year that you switch a button and it comes off. If you don't want to hear that sound, keep that uh, sensor on that hose bag it up and tie it off with a zip lock when you get a conversion kit I'm gonna tell you that's all the conversion kit is is about eight zip uh, zip ties black with some plugs on them and then they want you to go to the dealership and have it taken out of the computer 07 and newer yes you need to go to the dealership because it's inside of the computer mine is the last year in 06 that's a flip switch in the back panel that turns it off and on i personally don't care if the light on my dash says suspension is off i know it's off it won't be making no noise and that's all that's important so the shock has already been put on just that quick everything has been put back together it's really not hard if you have the right material he has to pick up <clears throat> that it's a part of the suspension right there you have to put that back up in that bolt. It's essential. But I'm just saying on uh, versus the other guy, I want to give him credit because we were worried about a 30 millimeter socket to remove a bolt. And there's a pin clap clasp on the nut side and you don't need it when I go to the opposite side and my son takes it apart I'll show you what I mean there's something else I'm going to show you real quick in the conversion kit 
you get a white bag that's like a Ziploc bag. And then they have these tie straps, zip ties, which I don't have with me. But I happen to have a roll of this, which is going to withstand those little cheap white bubble bags. So I figured out what size I need, bend it over, and I'm going to use some real thick duct tape. Then we're going to zip tie it to my frame. That is the conversion kit. Don't waste your money. Just buy the coil over spring. And I'll show you when we're doing it. But I'm in here cutting it. So I wanted to let you know. Okay. I actually. <clears throat> excuse me. I actually just got a different piece. There's a pair of regular shears that you can buy. Friskers or cheaper. Yeah, friskers. And I've got it laid out so it's a little bit, a little bit longer. But it's better to get you a roll of that if you have something handy like that. Because those things are going to vibrate while you're going down the freeway and you're going to hear noises and you're going to be so mad. So I told my son, if you're going to do it, do it right. Do it right the first time or don't do it. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay. Just put that insulation on there and uh, put black tape around it because you want to keep that dry even though because it's still electrical. And again, I don't like hearing no noise. I can't stand noise. People will pay a lot of money for a Lincoln to have to duct tape it because Ford wants to play stupid games. Then there's a place up in there, and you have to zip tie it. Might have to take two of them since they're short. Sorry for the angle. There, maybe that'll work. kind of hard to see because it's I'll give you a better look see now it's zip tied up in there let me take it back out you zip tie it up in there like I told him if I have to hear rattling we're in trouble <laughs> For those that don't have an idea how to bolt, do the bolts, you crisscross them. For someone, oh. it's going to help them, but you do. You crisscross and keep on going around until you tighten them up. Now we're off to the other side. Okay, now we're moving on to this other side. <sighs> Sorry, let me get around here. All right, beginning. This is the left rear. <clears throat> We're going to Keep in mind, the little bolts on the other side that drops the suspension down, he left it off on the other side because he's got skinny hands and long and he can get up in there. I want you to see, this is the difference when they drop completely down. You can't even see the top of the tire you're about that far and then here's the uh, here's the new one then the front and the difference huh 
yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit higher, but it's okay. That is a uh, Monroe. For this big of a vehicle, it's a 19 ex expanded. It's 19 and three quarters expanded. And you see how high that is. So I'm going to tell you, if you buy any shock that has a heavy-duty spring on it, ask a very important question. What is the extended measurement of the shock, or as some people call it, the damper? Do not get confused. A damper is an old word for shock, mostly used in Europe. I actually had to find that out because I'm not from Europe, but I lived there, so I've seen a lot. Excuse me. At any rate, um, here we go. We're jacked up and we're getting ready to take it off. I'm going to cut it while he's taking it off. There's no use in videotaping and removing a wheel. Okay, YouTubers. Now we are open tires off. I live in the Midwest. So, yep, I got that junk on there. I made a remark to my son I need to get it cleaned. He said, nope. Once you start Dude, driving it, it'll clean. Yeah. Here's a friend. Everybody needs this pipe. It actually came off of the end of my three-ton jack. And it can be used as a bar to help you when you have to loosen up the nut. See? See it moving? Very slow. Another YouTuber trying to get me to watch a video. It takes some time. This is a 30 millimeter socket. If you can see right down there, there's a nut. See that metal? Looks like aluminum piece. It's like a pinch bracket. It holds that nut. Deal. I want you to get a really good look at it. I'm going to try to zoom in. The purpose is... Wait a minute. Yeah, it's probably too much. The purpose is, is that you want to... Let get a better... Let me take it out a little bit. There. The purpose is, is that... The... That maintains stationary while you actually see the bolt moving out. This is something I did. I will give the guy that has the um, the shock conversion. He just did it on a, a champagne colored regular rather regular length Lincoln, and uh, I did watch it. I'm not gonna lie. But we're not taking everything off like he did. This is the regular buckled up old chalk. Um, air shocks are nice. I, I don't say they're not. They're very, very nice. When you're going 65 miles an hour over an overpass and your front suspension goes out, all you better hope to God that you can drive a a race car because you're going to need to slow down, not slam your brakes on, take it very careful because that thing hit the, it just bottomed out on me like it was nothing. And then my car started just, it was like bouncing all over the place. It scared the, the H out of me. And uh, I drove home of another probably eight, nine miles with my flashers on. And I was lucky if I was going five or ten miles an hour. 
and avoided at all costs not to hit any dips because it the only thing keeping the car on the road is the shock has a um a bumper on it a lot of people don't know what a bumper stop is but it's the rubber piece that goes between your shock uh one question i want to let them know that up there the other person used a ranch Use what a ranch. Do, let me see what you have there Ranch. What millimeter, millimeter is that? Let me let them see it. It's a it 15 millimeter. Ranch. That that gives you a lot more leverage. You can move it around better. Um, another thing, I'm gonna give a shout out to Harbor Freight. We get a lot of stuff at Harbor Freight. Um, not a paid advertisement for them, but I will say uh, a lot of home tools. We haven't had them break or nothing. Pittsburgh and all that. They they talk bad about them, but he hasn't had any break on him yet. Um, I had actually a craftsman break on me before, and they're supposed to be lifetime guarantee too. So it just depends on what you do for a living. But the um, the best shocks. Uh, excuse me, the best uh, ranch sets you can buy, it, these are Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is uh, the whole brand set, buy the whole set of everything. This, that's a Husky uh, ranch, talk, uh, ratchet, but they're heavy duty, very, I mean, it's not cheap junk. If you buy those chrome ones, you're probably going to have a problem. And then we have a big breaker bar. It's just by the essentials. This one here is made in Taiwan. And it's a cheap one, I guess. Breakneck BB1A. Made in Taiwan. He's had this forever. You don't have to buy big, 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 huge tools. You can get a lot of people sell them all over the place. There's another ratchet. All of them are Pittsburgh. I do stand by Pittsburgh. I'm sorry if people like it or not. If you can afford Snap-on, fine. I even bought a Pittsburgh 310 at Christmas time. It was uh, on sale three ton and got it for a hundred bucks it was ninety nine dollars one day so you can get some good deals okay now we're back over here just that little bit of time with the tools the and off. he's already got this off <clears throat> Everybody has their preference on how they want to take them loose. Let me get on this other side. Right under here. You have to relieve that. Keep in mind, he personally just has it jacked up in the middle there. I've seen some videos where they tear the whole car apart. To bring that out, we have moved this. That other jack. What? The, the hammer. Okay, a sledgehammer. And that's it. The bag is gone. You don't care if it comes out rough or not, because it's never going back in again. <clears throat> but make sure when you do take it out that you take that unplug that sensor and leave it connected to your wiring you're going to need that sensor that sensor is going to be your best friend do not take it out that's what you wire up it's right here 
that's part of what your computer is going to tell it to work or not to work. Personally, I'm going to try to find a better place to to put it up in there somewhere myself when he's finished goofing around. Okay, now here's the big daddy. In the front, we notice that the front's different. These are some big shocks, but you measure them out and they are exactly 19 three quarters. And you measure them from here, 19 three quarters, not from the bottom. You measure it from there to the very top inside. Measure it from it on your old chalk. Like on this one here, if I take a measuring tape and go from the inside, this is the shock here. This is the airbag, but you measure from there to there. Let me see. Inside there. And that is where this shock bolt comes out, but it stops up in there. From there to there gives you what you need. Again, I stress on it. Because people complain they're not getting the ride that they want and all this other stuff. Get the ones that fit your car. Extended and compressed. You want on a short Lincoln, you need to find something that's smaller than a... Don't buy nothing 21 higher than 21. I think if you even bought these ones, Monroe's, you would be very uh, unsatisfied. Because again, I have a bigger vehicle. It's, it's a full, full, full size. I'm going to try to show you the neighbors without showing their license plate. They have a full size like that. That's a big boy. I happen to have the same kind of car as the big limited edition uh, Expedition or the Eddie Brower. If you have a short one, don't let people fool you because you're going to get a, you're better off buying a cheaper spring and taking uh, or go get some used ones at first so you can figure it out. Don't let them try to sell you a bunch of junk. Uh, I seen a lady has a 2016. Hers is regular. And she was in tears telling me the story about how she had paid so much to get hers put in. She didn't even want to talk about it. I'll be straight up honest with you. I bought mine at a local name brand store. Got a, a mechanic discount. And uh, that, all four shocks. And uh, another part for my other car, which is another hundred and some bucks. And uh, I paid $600. And my son's putting them on. So, you got to do your homework, man, before you go out and spend $2,000. 2, I had a guy tell me, I have some Moogs, M-O-O-G. They're racing shocks. I have some Moogs. I'll sell them to you. Put them on and everything. He said, $1,600 and some change. That's after he asked me if I was sitting down or not. It's ridiculous. You can buy the shocks. And everybody should be friends with a mechanic. If not, learn how to do it yourself. I have a disability and I still do a lot of my own work myself. Or I help my 
my kid help help him do things. Don't give up. Um. Sometimes it's pain in the butt in the back. What is? Sometimes it's pain in the butt in the back when you turn it. The very you, very back one. Hand. He's hard of hearing. He said the very back bolt. Sometimes it's a little bit of a pain in the rear end to get that in there, even with a uh, ratchet type of a wrench. So that's really still your best bet. Get your ratchet wrench. And I'll uh, try to put down on the display what you need for the parts. He's got it. The, this Ugh. video is a little different than one I've seen because it's a little complicated for some people. That's mm. why I'm just letting him do it. And you can fully see how it, it mm. is done. The easiest way you can get it done. And now... We are back over here, and that's hanging. Let me get around this way again. I have to get down here. Now you go ahead and put these back on. Now, so you don't have that to, drops. Just... Why does that need? Why do you need to put that on before you put that bolt in? I just just so I can let the viewers okay, know. So do you, do you, I gotta put a little small jack and push it up. So. You can push it down, you, you can put the bolts in, it's the same thing. Depending what it is, you can't get in or not. He's giving you options to make it easier without taking other things apart. Um, it again depends on if you're a strong person or not. My son is very strong. Size doesn't really matter a lot. I mean, he's laying on there, trust me. He, he got it in. I heard it. Um, what is that O-ring? That's come from here. It's your stationery. Oh, okay. There's no good. It's no way. big deal. No worry about that. See, he just laid right over the whole piece. <laughs> and I've actually stood on it. That's not in yet. Um, do you want to get... You Thanks. need that? Or do you want to pick that up? Oh, look, right there. This here, hello? This is on the bottom. See it? See that, see no, that, there you go. Here's the thing here, you gotta put these back on before you turn the bolt to grab it. You need that jack? Okay, you're, you're watching it live. It's in. It's in? I keep winding up. If you're not strong enough, able-bodied to do it, then get your little short jack. Bring it up underneath the shock bottom so you can lift that shock up, compress it. Uh, he never had to uh, move anything. Uh, the fronts, the fronts we had to um, take a screwdriver. I'll show you on the old one. We had to take it on the... Oh, I'm off center. On the... the the new shocks on the front, they they needed to be turned a little bit, and you just get a big screwdriver, a bigger one than this, something like this size, and go into there, and then you twist it until the shock turns so that it fits flush inside of there like he's got. He obviously didn't have the problem. It just lined up like magic. Now, he hadn't had to drop anything at all. And again, it's all 
how strong you are or what, what you're able to do. Now he's going to get his power bar. Tighten it back up. Yeah, they're good for a lot of things. Those ends off of these jacks. <coughs> and then... Uh, okay, now you put these back on. Then you just put that piece. It's part of the suspension. I don't know the name of it. I'm not that much of a mechanic. But... I want you to see you this. Five sixteen for this, if you hold on to it. Five sixteenths. And, uh. Is it bolt? <clears throat> well, you put it back on. Okay. With the wrench. And then you hold it inside of there and you tighten them up. Okay, hang on. Let me get around the other side. It's so much easier. You see this? You see it? Here's a little hole right there. You push it in. Okay, and now bolt. he's saying you put the bolt in. Now, pause. Put the put the bolt. Put the wrench on. And start bolting it up. Then you take that small, that's a three-eighths. Three. What's that small one you have? No, it's just no it's what's that there? Five sixteenths. This one is a five sixteenths that's big enough to go on that screw, and it's a ratchet. He really believes in these ratchets. And I have to say that, yes, he's proven to show me that Yes, they work. I mean, if you look at the difference on these two, this is this is moving. This is regular socket uh, closed in, and you're gonna pull off, pull off this one. You're just gonna just go back and forth and keep on rolling, and that's what he's doing over there now. We call it ranchers, not salt. They saw something. No, I'm talking about these ranches. Ranch. Yeah. These these are swift. These here. They're stripper socket ranches. And these ones, they're stable. They don't move, so you got to take it on and off, on and off. That's what I was saying. I was explaining to him. He's hard of hearing. Gotta get this bolt bent. Okay, wait a minute. Pause it again here. I'm oh, gonna go around. Hopefully, this will be one of the most in depth videos. We like in depth videos for first timers. Neither one of us have ever done this before, but. Sure beats the heck out of paying somebody a lot of money to change them out when you can do it yourself. You gotta put loose jacks in there to pick it up. Okay, now you need the jack. He never put jack stands underneath of it because I have a three ton jack. 